All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashami Awashai, Bahasham Rachakwadash, double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and blessings to the elect and the nation of Israel. All right, this year is number one from the Great Millstone Camp in Trinidad. And uh, come to do another lesson. All right, to the Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Bahashami Awashai, Bahasham Rachakwadash. All right, and um, the name of the lesson is "What Poses a Threat to the to Esau's Empire or the so-called White Man's Kingdom or America or the Beast System? Is it Christianity? Is it Islam? Is it the Moors? Is it is it is it um, knowing that he is a, 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 a Egyptian so-called, or is it being a Hebrew Israelite? What poses the a threat? What poses the threat? Because all are we, all right, all are we, we stand to, we will waken up to the so-called white man that he is the devil. Okay, but then it are men who might say the white man wicked, like the nation of Islam, they go say the white man wicked, but we had a kind of cooperate with them. All right, Christianity, some of them pastors might say, yeah. Something you know something against the system, but we had to try and still find a way to see how we could live within it. All right. The Islam's the Islamic people is the same damn thing. They are not looking for no sovereignty. They just want to find a way to live in it. So what it is posing a threat to Esau's empire. Alright, what it is posing this threat because it has something somebody had to be posing a threat to him. Otherwise he just keep on ruling, ruling, ruling and oppressing everybody. So somebody had to pose this threat. Alright? And the answer is for that question is the Hebrew Israelites, beginning with Great Millstone, the doctrine that they teach poses the greatest threat. All right, to Esau's empire. Because Vladimir Putin is an either might still the same way. So even if Russia bomb America and Russia come to, 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 to say they're going on a rule, which ain't going to happen, it's still an either might rule in freaking America or ruling the world. But our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bashami, our Shai, coming back to bring down all of them and rule over everything else and make us the Hebrew Israelites joint heirs with him so that poses and this is what we preaching about all right this is what we preaching about so this that ultimately poses the greatest threat to Esau's kingdom Christianity do not hold any threat all right Christianity is something that they made up Going back into to, to the um, slavery time, the Renaissance period into slavery time is a made up philosophy, is not the correct thing what the disciples back then of Yahweh was following, is something made up. Let me get a precept. These um, Psalms, right? Psalms, the 73rd chapter, right? The 17th verse, right? This is one of my favorite precepts, right? And it says, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I the end. Who end? Who end? When you read the verse, I will read verse 1. Well, let me see what is the sanctuary of God or the Most High. All right? It says, Ma Kwadash. All right? Ma Kwadash. sacred place and this which is in the scriptures the holy place the sanctuary the holy bible of the temple of the tabernacle of ezekiel's temple of yahweh all right the the, the scriptures that is the sanctuary of the mosai in the beginning was the word all right and we had it dwelling yahweh by hashem yahushai so it begins with coming to this truth and that is how we're going to understand the end of the so-called white man 
only the most I could show you the end of the soca white man. This is Psalm 73 verse. Um, I read from 3. It says, For I was envious of at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So our fa our forefather Asaph. Alright. Which was a um he was in he was in a, if I'm mistaken. Mazifa Mazifa they could look it up. Just to, I I um I I um, go off. Asaph, alright. Um the father of Hezekiah, son of Berechiah, chief Levite musician under David. Dyson. I know that but I I, I don't want to make I, I don't want to misquote. Yeah, he was the chief Levite musician under David. This is what he said. Alright. That is what he said. He said the wicked, right? Is the wicked he was talking about. And let me see let me see who is the wicked. Let us see who is this wicked. This is the book of Malachi. The last book in the Old Testament. The, the first chapter and the fourth verse. It says, Whereas Edom said we are impoverished. You see what is what 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 we doing is basically destroying every single thing that the so called white man built. Through the words of Yahweh Bashami Shai. Because first before I read the scripture, I'm gonna get next precept. These um the book of Revelation, the twentieth chapter, and I will read Um I read from the sixth verse, right? So we had to understand the revelation the twentieth chapter is that it is jump around. But I read from the sixth verse, right? It says, Blessed and holy is he that had part of the first resurrection, which going into the elect also all Israel. Alright, because we is the the nation the first nation that going to rise up and rule. I think one hand no other nation rising up and rule, but we will be the, the nation in authority for a thousand year period. Alright? It says, on such the second death had no power. But right, the elect. Alright. The tower, the flock. The second death ain't going to have no power over them. The second death is this destruction are coming. Alright. You are part in the first resurrection. You, you see, you, and during that time, when the elect come back, they go and have children and bring back the whole nation. And all that time, all during that time, these heathens will be under the foot. Until the thousand years fulfill, and then you go and let them back and into the land and get them the portion, and they go and be tributaries unto us. It says, "But they shall be priests of the of the Most High and of Yahweh, and shall reign with Him a thousand years. And after that thousand year period, send them back into the land. Into the land, you can read Isaiah the fourteen chapter. It says, "And when the thousand years are expired, this now the jump now they." Just going back to when you read in verse verse 1 and 2. Alright? Verse 3, actually. Well, yeah, well, verse 2 and 3. That, that, they jump back today. And this thousand years here we're talking about is when the so-called white man went down. Alright? Which, as the Apostle Lala Tahase, alright? Septimius Severus, but it have other men before Septimius Severus, who was Jakes, who was in the Roman Empire as emperors. All right, but they really went down. All right, they really went down. The whole Roman Empire, when you do the history, really, really, really went down. That a man called Diocletian, who ended up splitting up the empire, and then they had the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern. You see when the east really really fell, the west gained strength and that happened about into the four late four um hundreds. No Salah. Salah. The um three hundreds, the four hundreds and the five hundreds. But ultimately at the five hundred point period, Rome completely the eastern part of Rome fell and then you had the, the, the western part of Rome known as Byzantium or the Byzantine Empire which was ruled by Jakes primarily only Jakes ruled for that thousand year period and at that time or the Roman Empire before which was ruled by the Caesars 
Caligula, Julius, all of them. Them fellas was Edomites, so-called white people. And their whole nation at that time, all right, went up into the Caucasus mountain region or wherever they went or other <laughs> Yes, I like your mother there. I got a phone call. <clears throat> no son, mother. But anyhow, um, it says about uh, yeah, going back to like the the mid three hundreds for the the mid mid three hundreds into the four hundreds into the year five hundred AD. So all around that time, Rome or the Roman Empire, which was any time when all the Caesars was ruling fell. Alright? And from that time, from that time, these Edomites, they went wherever the hell they went. Some of them went into the, the, Mount, the Caucasus mountain regions. They live in like cave dwellers, living like, like beasts. Alright? Or whoever was, wherever the hell they was. They wasn't ruling nothing for a thousand years. Alright? They weren't ruling anything. They had no say, no power, no might for a thousand years. Matter of fact. Matter of fact. What's this? No, I'm pausing. If somebody asked a question. This is what I was going to show you. Right? So it says, after the fall of Rome, I kind of all over the place, but I'm going to bring it back to a point, right? After the fall of Rome, why did it take over 800 years before the Renaissance occurred? The word Renaissance means rebirth. Why 800 years? Over 800 years was actually a thousand years. Thus fulfilling scripture. Satan is the so called white man. That is the Satan you're talking about. All right. Um, let me see. Let's see what I had to say here. Let's see. Let's see. Should I can open file? But anyhow, when you do the history. I can't remember what I'd look up. I see Apostle Elata, I look it up. But when you do the history, alright, when you do the history, the history I'll show you is about a thousand years. This, this says the time period between the fall of Rome and the Renaissance is often dubbed the Dark Ages. Let's see if they give you a time. Uh, well, this, hey, it's actually a thousand. When you, do the, when you do the research, it's a thousand years. I mean, you could look it up for yourself, but we get back to the scriptures, right? It says, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. That, that Renaissance period when Edom come back out of the low state that he was in the captivity that he was in he was bound up and shut up so that he couldn't rule he had no power no way that is him being loosed out of the prison this and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth no this is what this was his mission given unto him by yahweh by hashem Yahushai. all right the mission of deception all right the most i give him a mission to deceive let me look up the meaning of the word deceive where did deceive come from the Greek word? Strong's G, 4105, Planao. Planao. And it says to cause the stray, the lead a stray, to lean, to lead aside from the right way. He come into light. 
to lead away from the truth, to lead into error, to deceive, to be led in error, to let to be led aside from the path of virtue. Woo wee! All right, to go astray, one that roam about. That is what he coming back to do. His mission was to cause the earth to go astray from the right path. All right. When he came out of them caves, his mission was to do that. And he came out of the caves, all right, and started back to rule during the Borgias. It says, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea, which going on going to World War Three. All right, but his mission was as he came out of the caves, is to go out there and cause the nations, which in the four quarters of the earth, to, to go astray from the correct path, to go astray from the truth. So the only thing that could stop that or that could hamper his, his mission is the truth. All right? The truth is the only thing that could hamper his mission, which is what the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai gave us. All right, this is why when you read in John the seventh chapter, Apostle Atlanta had the video on it. I didn't get finished, I didn't get to finish, watch it. But this is what he says, right? He that believeth on me as the scripture, John 7 38, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, which is this, which is the truth. So, in other words, we, we, the truth had a flood away, he lies, and then. Is de- that is what going to threaten this devil. Alright? That's the only thing that threaten him. You calling him the devil and telling him all that. He knows all that. But his power lies in deception. And only the truth could, could, could conquer him. Christianity is something that he saw controlled from, from day one. When, from the time he come back into to, to, to power, he controlled that. That is his own. This modern day Christianity worshiping Caesar Borgia or Serapus Christus or aka Jesus Christ. This John the fourth the fourteen chapter the six verse it says, Yahweh shall say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yahweh Shah is the truth, right? So believing in him is how we going to conquer this devil. These um Isaiah the twenty eighth chapter. And I'll read the um, the 14, the 17 verse. It says, Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. The refuge of lies, which is Esau kingdom. This is this truth. This is what going to sweep away Esau and he lies. Alright? This truth going to sweep away all the... Shall sweep away. Come from the Greek word. Um, yeah, I. Yeah, I. Yeah, yeah, I. Yeah, right? Yeah, I. Yeah. Sweep away, sweep together. Right. Right. Sweep away the refuge. I'm going to put him in the word refuge. Come from the Hebrew word makha, makasa, makasa. And it means refuge, shelter from rain or storm, from danger of falsehood. All right. The, the shelter, the abode of lies, the hope or the trust in lies, the truth going to sweep away all that. That is what the truth is for. All right. Because Esau this is the only way we could conquer him. It says, and the water shall overflow the hiding place, the hiding place. All right. Where Esau do all he works in the dark, this truth going on overflow that. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. 
all right all the lies that you saw told will be discovered and Christianity do not pose that threat because Christianity don't expose nobody. All right? Christianity don't expose nobody. All Christianity does do is just give us some kind of false, some kind of false hope that you're going to be blessed or some shit. All right? That is all it does do. It's a big dirty lie. Christianity is a big dirty lie. These are Revelation 11, 12 verse 11, right? It says, And they overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. All right, this is the elect, the, the, the ones who are part in the first resurrection. That is how they go and overcome this devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. This truth was only given to the elect. So, hey, that is, who going on, that is how they go and defeat. Esau because Esau used lies, he's a deceiver, he's a deceptionist. This Romans chapter 11, verse 7, right? And it says, What then Israel had not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election had obtained it, and the rest were blinded. All right, so we need the elect have this truth, and the elect is who will be standing up on the corners boldly breaking down the strongholds of the so called white man. All right, this is um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse, verse 7. It says, For the mystery of iniquity that already work, only he who now let it will let, till he be taken, until he be taken out of the way. The mystery of iniquity is Esau or Edom. All right, at the time when Paul wrote this letter to the Thessalonians, they were in the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, which I was talking about earlier, with, with the different Caesars. Okay, with the different Caesars, you had Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, Nero, Galba, all of them men on them, the Vitellius, the Vespasian, the, the, the Titus, the Domitian, all of them men on them, that is that time in the mystery of iniquity. It was already in power. It says, and then shall that wicked be revealed when he get taken out of the way. All right? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Who is the most high spirit? Who is the most high spirit? Why is the most why is the most high mouthpiece? Alright? Why is the most high mouthpiece? The 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 Jews. Oh not the Jews, Salakia, the prophets. The prophets. That is the most high mouthpiece. That's not what I'm looking for a priest up here in the sword. I look at the other day, I was reading it for you. Alright. He's, um, yeah, I get it. Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 20. And it says, let me see who's the most high mouthpiece. Who's the most high mouthpiece is anybody? Any and anybody, Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 20, right? And it says, but Jeremiah said, who is Jeremiah? A prophet. And what did Moses made Jeremiah? A prophet unto who? This is Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, right? It says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. The same thing Yahushua told us. He said, um, go ye and proclaim this doctrine unto all nations on the earth. Because Israel scattered throughout all nations, but we also had to tell all these nations who they are and what role they play in prophecy because the so-called white man came out here and deceived everybody. Tell this one he's an Indian, tell this one he's a Negro, tell this one he's a, 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 a Saudi Arabian, and this next one he's a Canadian, and that next one he's a, a Trinidadian. So we had to tell them who they is and set everything back in order. I say, how about Shami Yahushua had it in the first place? But let me go back in Jeremiah 38 verse 20. So we see Jeremiah was a prophet unto the nations. So this is what the Lord said to Jeremiah. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee. Obey, I beseech thee. This is what Jeremiah told the people, right? So like, yeah. Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of Yahweh, which I speak unto thee. 
so it shall be well unto thee and thy soul shall live so now let me go back to the the the, the second thessalonians second chapter and the eighth verse and it says and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth who is the spirit who is the most high mouthpiece the prophets all right as jeremiah was he was speaking the words of the most high unto them same thing we doing and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming so we so we speaking the most high words unto these people and them outside here and letting them know that the lord is about to bring destruction upon the so-called white man and telling the so-called white man his empire his kingdom his government his rulership is going down bit by bit by bit by bit and there's nothing that he can do about it other than see it go down all right he can't do nothing about it this is um second corinthians the 10th chapter the first verse the third verse right it says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh all right these um ephesians the sixth chapter and the 10th verse right or the 12th verse right it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places jumping back to the second corinthians the 10th chapter and the, the third verse it says for though we walk in the flesh we do not walk after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination of every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the most high, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Yes, I like Yahweh.